St. Peter Claver In the late 16th century, Spain's material wealth was on the decline. In 1557, King Philip II declared bankruptcy for Spain, and did so twice more in the following decades. Despite this loss of wealth, Spain was still considered politically powerful due to its presence in and ownership of a variety of territories, and in 1580, Philip II was crowned king of the Portuguese as well. This new Portuguese claim came with authority over land in South America and in Africa. Unfortunately, it also included the market of buying and selling slaves from Africa. Peter Claver was born into a wealthy Spanish family in 1581. Rejecting his family's wealth, in 1601 he joined the Society of Jesus, better known as the Jesuits. During his formation in Majorca, he encountered the future St. Alphonsus Rodriguez, who had a remarkable influence on Claver. Thanks to Rodriguez's guidance, Claver decided to become a missionary to the New World. In 1610, Claver arrived in Cartagena, Colombia, and was ordained a priest six years later. There he witnessed the massive and lucrative slave trade, as Cartagena was a hub for slave ships from Africa. Naturally, the sight horrified the new Jesuit. He resolved to devote his life and mission to the slaves who arrived in Cartagena, even going so far as to designate himself the Ethiopium Semper Servus, the slave of the Africans forever. Once a month, a slave ship would arrive in port, carrying about 1,000 slaves, and it was then that Claver would make himself available to the slaves by boarding the ship and caring for their physical needs, while also taking the opportunity to preach to them the gospel. Before he boarded a ship, Claver would beg for food so that he could bring some to the slaves to feed them, and he would find someone who could translate Spanish for him. He would then refuse to leave the ship until every slave had been taken care of. In his own words, we must speak to them with our hands before we try to speak to them with our lips. To those slaves who had not been baptized but desired it, he administered the sacrament, and it is estimated that he baptized around 300,000 slaves over the remainder of his life. This worked towards the slaves' advantage, not only spiritually, but physically as well, as Claver could then exhort Christian slaveholders to treat their slaves, now brothers and sisters in Christ, with adequate care. He would even seek to have the slaves entrusted to people who would take very good care of them, as opposed to letting them fall into the hands of a cruel master. Claver also endeavored to catechize the slaves, not simply baptize them. Determined not to let the language barrier stop his mission, in addition to translators, he would use pictures to communicate the truths of the faith. His dedication extended so far as to visit slaves on plantations, caring for them and teaching them. In solidarity with and in penance for the slaves, he ate and slept very little, taking very seriously his self-proclaimed title of Slave of the Africans Forever. However, Claver's missionary work was not perceived highly by all. A number of Spanish residents in Cartagena would accuse him of misusing the sacraments by giving them to those whom they viewed as subhuman. Some residents refused to enter the same church as Claver while he ministered to slaves. Further, his superiors would sometimes admonish him so as to not upset the locals. In 1651, Claver fell sick with the plague and was confined to his room until his death three years later. His caregiver during that time, a liberated slave, treated him very poorly, often refusing to feed or bathe him. Yet Claver remained charitable the entire time. As his time drew near, locals flocked to his room, where they took every artifact they could from the holy man's living space, save for the clothes on his back. He died on September 7, 1654. As Christ instructed, St. Peter Claver reminds us to tend to those who suffer the most, even at tremendous cost to ourselves. St. Peter Claver, pray for us.